Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to give you 10 of the best tips, tricks, and settings for eBay that everybody should know. These are things that I would recommend everybody doing if they have not done it. It's something that will help your business speed it up and do other things as well. Let's show you the first one. Now, the first one is business policies. Now with business policies, you can go to your main settings page and you can simply click business policies and it will open up business policies. You can create new ones, reassign them, you can delete them, you can clean up your policies. I have quite a few as you can see. Some of them cover all of my items, 25,000 individual listings, almost 27,000 total items. I've got them all broken down by what they do, what they are, what the shipping policy is, is based on what the item is basically. So medium mail over certain poundage, I have a totally different rate. Now you can set these up however you want. I've got medium mail over like say four pounds because that can't go with the global shipping and it also can't go priority first class if I'm sending international. Other items can't be sent to certain countries. Other items are usually under a certain weight. I've got them all broken down here, including items that I can't ship overseas. If you haven't done and looked into business policies, I would honestly do it. It sets them up. It gives you one central location where you can change every single thing about that aspect of it. In fact, let's just open up one real quick. And it allows you to do any of these changes you can see here. I accept returns for 30 days, and you can change it however you wish. There's a lot of other features that you can do with this. Now, the next one is for blocked bidders. Once you block a bidder, they can still email you unless you click a certain button. Now, from the same page we got to business policies, we can simply go over to site preferences. So we've got buyer requirements right here. If you edit the buyer requirements, you'll see this section here where you have to check it. Don't allow blocked buyers to contact me. They won't see a button to be able to email you. Now, obviously, there is a glitch going on now with that, but it is still something you should do. It is something you should still do because once it's fixed, it has been a good thing where they can't contact you again at all. Keep in mind, though, once that's clicked, someone who you're still dealing with right this minute, whether it's canceled or ended with, they can still contact you for a certain length of time. Now, another one is buyer requirements. It'll stop you from getting people who haven't paid for items with other people. It'll stop them from being able to bid on your items. Now, this option's on the same page. Don't allow blocked buyers to contact me. Same page, same buyer requirements. You can block buyers who have received two unpaid item strikes within whatever time frame you wish. I have mine set to a month. You can block buyers in locations you don't ship to. Now, I know that may seem crazy if you block the shipping locations in the shipping section under policies. They can still bid, technically. This will stop them from doing that. Just FYI, something you should do. Another one, block buyers with negative feedback score. I've never seen a negative score. Personally, a zero doesn't bother me, but a negative I just wouldn't mess with. And another one some people do, buyers who may bid on several of my items and not pay for them. Now, I don't use this feature here because I'll have people pay over a month time frame. So at the end of 30 days, I have people pay for a whole month's worth, and then I ship them all together. Now, these are people I've dealt with for a very long time. But if you're having problems with people buying a bunch of items and just not paying, this will block them off as well. It would be something I would recommend if you're having issues with that. Now, another thing I would always recommend is to have all white backgrounds and to have your item take up 85% or more of the images that you post for every one of your listings. Now, here's just one of my items. I've got it enlarged so it fills up the entire screen. Even the other parts of this, it's 85% or better of the actual image is my item. Now, I know people think, why would you want to do that? In the future, you never know, you may want to cross list or something could happen to your account, to your site, whatever the case may be, that gives you the option to use those same images somewhere else. So if you want to cross list, do Shopify or whatever the case may be, 
you will be ready to do it. Now, you may not be ready now, you may not be ready in a year or two, but your items will be ready and it'll be a force of habit so you can do it at any single time you wish. Now, that is a universally pretty much site accepted rule. Amazon set the goalpost at 85% of your image with all white background. You also can't include something in the image like a ruler or something technically uh, unless it's included in the lot. Other than that, it's really a good practice to do. Now, another thing to do is to edit your photos just on eBay when you upload them. Don't worry about editing them or anything else like that. As you can see here, there's options. You can crop it down any way you want. Uh, you can revert it by hitting the can. It'll switch it back. You can rotate it here. You can adjust the brightness to brighten it up just a little bit if you want. It's got a lot of settings. They're fairly decent settings. They work very well. I personally just recommend using eBay. It's about as good as you can get with most of it, unless you're you know, really into something or have some really fine quality item. For the most part, this is all I do is just use eBay. Now, if I'm going to use this listing on another site, it'll just be pulled from a third party in the first place, imported, at least for the most part, for all of the ones that I have used. So I can use it just as it is. I don't have to do anything extra. I don't have to have another copy technically. It'll just be this image here. Now, another one is the offers to watchers. It does work. It is something I would honestly always recommend. So in the hub from your listings page, all you have to do is slide down. It's going to tell you I've got some available. You're eligible. I can send 156 offers to watchers out through this option here. And once it opens up, I've got an option to send offers to everybody on this list. Let's just pick one here and I am going to send something out. Let's click send offer. And we're just going to type in a price here. Let's say $7.99. This is something I've had up for a while. No big deal, whatever I take on it. Even if it's on sale, that's your call. You set the price. You do it how you wish. The feature does work, though. In some days, it's 20% of my sales if I'm doing a bunch of these. Now, another one is the marketing tab in your hub. It's something that has a bunch of different features that you can do such as promotions, markdown sales, and then promoted listings which are something you have to pay eBay for. Now through this page you have multiple options. The advertising section here means you have to pay for it. I personally don't do promoted listings. I have done them in the past. I'm just not happy with the results nor with the ad blocker issues with them. So I personally don't do it. Some people it works just fine for in flooded categories. So I would recommend at least trying it out once or twice. If you don't see any results, don't do it again. Now, other options you can do are merchandising here. You've got a promotions and a markdown sale. You can just click on one of these options and you can create a promotion. Now, I've run some in the past. You can see it out of just a couple basic promotions. We increased our sales by 800 and some odd dollars. And that's just in the last 30 days. So no big deal. I do uh, so much percentage of our inventory on sale really easy to do you can just create what you want and what i always do is sales event and markdown it's one of the best ones here i usually just pick the 30 percent sometimes if i want to blow out some older items i will change that and then i will hit select items from here you can choose whichever way you wish both of them i use so i'll create a rule and sometimes i'll have six seven thousand items on sale 10 percent 20 percent or something like that if i'm doing like a summer blowout or something or i can select specifically down to 500 individual items both of those options work just fine now another thing that most people should at least know where it's at is how to turn off the automation for automatically relisting all of your listings every 30 days you can turn those off so it won't do that. You can pause it for lengths of time as you wish. Most people are unaware of that being an option. It's automatically set to be on for everybody. Now to do this, simply from your listing page in the hub, listing tab here, slide down and you will see automation preferences. Once you click that, it's going to open up and you'll have a section here and you can do listing automation scheduling here, which will suspend my items from being automatically listed and relisted right here. Copy my automation rules you can do as well. So it gives you those options.
doing this will stop them from auto relisting. You have to set the dates and the times. You have to set them ahead of time. So you can't just say, hey, I'm going to start now. I have never had much luck. It always seems to be delayed, but it does work. Once you pick it, you simply click the word apply. Now, another one is using eBay's built-in new features such as therapy to research your items so you know what to put them up for. Now with this, you just type in, say, Batman action figure. You'd put a little more information, but put as little information as you can to search for it. You'll click research and it'll pull it up. Make sure you select 365 days to give you the broadest range of information. And we can just sort it on down from here. Now you can pick the specific category it's going to go in. Uh, most of the time it's going to be in toys. It will automatically recategorize and only show those. You can also adjust it by highest to lowest, lowest to highest, date or whichever means you want just by simply clicking on the headers up here. Now this is something I would always recommend doing and I use this in conjunction with completed listings. Now I use completed listings because it shows what didn't sell. Just because a certain amount sold for a certain price doesn't mean that 10 or 20 times that didn't sell and it could be a very long time before you sell the item at that price. So you always have to look at both of those and to compare them. Another one would be to automate your feedback. So it automatically leaves feedback for you so you don't have to go back in and do do that when you sell a lot of items. Now this feature is available again in the hub under the listing tab under automation preferences again same place we went to turn off the automatic 30-day relist. Once we get into here you'll see right here automatically leave the following positive feedback. You can pick exactly what you leave you can type it all up ahead of time and it will automatically sort through those and randomly pick one each time someone pays or does whatever thing you check down here so buyer has paid for this item in my book once the person has paid for the item they have done their share what they should do I want them to know that the minute they pay I'm fine we're good to go and I leave them feedback immediately so that's my way to do it. You can do it however you want, but I would always turn this on because you never have to worry about it again. I know people sometimes spend 10 or 15 minutes a couple times a week going in and leaving feedback. I would just do it this way. You know, don't leave anything specific. They're all just generalized thanks, great eBayer and things like that. But this is a great feature. Well, there we are. Hopefully you take something from that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. It's easy to say, and it sounds just fine, but let's put this question right on the line. What is the zip code? A postal quirk? What does it do? How does it... If you'll lend an ear, we'll be glad to explain how the zip code eases your postal pain. The first digit tells in which part of the nation your letter will find its destination. Since the country's divided into ten big sections, each with a number to establish direct, your letter has even departed. We've already got it started. The next two digits go hand in hand to a major post office over land. Since each big section has town after town. We need these numbers to really narrow things down. We've got the section, we've got the city. Just two, two more, more numbers, numbers and we're sitting pretty. pretty. Mm -hmm. 
these last two digits are really specific. They're your local post office number. Terrific! What a system. As you can plainly see, just five little numbers. Quick as can be. But if you have a question or you have a doubt, if you're still not sure what the whole thing's about, just always remember, zip code defined means city to city in one straight line. But don't take it from us. Don't take it from me. Try it yourself. You'll see. It's a better deal than you get from any other post office department.